Welcome to Walking the Haftarah. I'm Tyler Merwin, and this is Torah Portion, Mishpatim. This week's Torah Portion is Exodus 21.1 through 24.18. Our Haftarah this week is Jeremiah 34, 8 through 22, and 33, 25, and 26. Mishpatim means judgments, as in the opening line of the Torah Portion it reads, Now these are the rules, or judgments, that you shall set before them, Exodus 21.1. This week's Torah portion deals primarily with various laws and regulations that affect many areas of our lives. Truly following the Torah has an effect on our everyday life. We can't just congregate on Shabbat and then do as we please on the other six days of the week. The portion begins with the rules regarding Hebrew slaves, or bond servants is probably a better word, and is also the connection, though the primary connection to our half Torah this week. When you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve six years, and in the seventh he shall go out for free, for nothing. Exodus 21, verse 2. There are two ways a Hebrew could be, would become a slave. He can sell himself to escape extreme poverty, or if he's a convicted criminal, like a thief, the court can sell him to raise funds for the victims. Regardless, the maximum amount of time a fellow Hebrew could be in servitude was six years. This is also a reminder that Adonai created the universe in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Israel was redeemed from slavery in Egypt, and are only to be slaves or servants to the Holy One who redeemed them. That's why there's such strict, rest strict restrictions on slavery. The Hebrew servant could voluntarily extend their service beyond six years. That's the putting your ear to the doorpost and getting a, quite a piercing but they would, could only be there mandatorily until the year of the Yovel or the Jubilee year. After the laws on bondsmen and women, our portion covers murder and manslaughter. And it says, whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. Exodus 21.12 Life is in the blood, and anyone who purposely takes another man's life shall be put to death. There's no atonement or payment that can release the murderer from his punishment. There's no amount of money, no amount of influence. Then we get into various injuries and compensations. We get into the eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, which we've covered before, but it's really speaking of just compensation for the loss. We've uh, covered it before. It's kind of like, you know, that spilling hot coffee and someone's lapping and then getting a, a million, two million dollar settlement for it doesn't seem like it's exactly equal weights and measures. Next, we'll cover the liability of owning an animal that maims or kills someone, an animal that damages property, and they cover stealing livestock and the rules about dealing with an intruder. It also covers the liability of having something lost or stolen or damaged while it's in someone else's care, or what we're to do about that. Truly, you can see through all these commandments how we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, which is at least means to be considerate to others when going about our daily affairs. Because if we are truly concerned ourselves with others, then we're not going to violate a lot of these commandments. If we're careless, we very may, we very may, may will. Then it covers the laws about seduction, some sorcery, bestiality, and idolatry. And then it says, You shall not wrong a sojourner or oppress him, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them, and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless. Exodus 22, 21 through 24. We are told many times in Scripture that our Father cares deeply for these three classes of people, the widow, the orphan, and the stranger. These three disadvantaged classes would be the most vulnerable to mistreatment and would have little to no socioeconomic recourse for the harms that they had received. Next, we cover lending money to your brethren. This was to be done as a sort of charity for the poor that allowed them to have dignity in the process. 
We don't think of like a business loan or just, I need, hey, I need a few dollars for this, that, or the other. Truly, they were going into debt or they were borrowing because they needed basic necessities of life. And you weren't allowed to charge interest to your brother. And if you took an essential item as security for the loan, say someone's cloak or they talked about a millstone, something that they would need to actually keep warm at night or they would need the millstone to be able to grind their bread so they would have daily bread, you must allow them to use it, even though they are supposedly keeping it for uh, security. You shall not pervert the justice due to your poor in his lawsuit. Keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent and righteous. For I will not acquit the wicked and you shall take no bribe for a bribe blinds the clear sighted and subverts the cause of those who are in the right. Exodus 23 verses 6 through 8. If only our justice systems truly held to this standard today. Three times in the year you shall keep a feast to me. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread as I commanded you. You shall eat unleavened bread for seven days at the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty-handed. You shall keep the feast of harvest of the first fruits of your labor and of what you sow in the field. You shall keep the feast of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in from the field the fruit of your labor. Three times in the year you shall all your males appear before the Lord, yod heh Exodus 23, 14-17. through 17. All of the commanded feasts are wrapped up in these three pilgrimage feasts, or Hagim, that are the Feast of Matzah, the Feast of Shavuot, and the Feast of Sukkot. Then we learn about the, protect, the protective angel, or the Malach, remember is angel, or it could be meant messenger, Remember, it really has to do with context, whether it's actually a heavenly being or an earthly being. But this protective angel will go forth before Israel. And this messenger appears to be yet another manifestation of Yeshua. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him. For he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Exodus 23, 20-22 Adonai tells them that he will give them the land little by little, so the desolate areas don't become overrun by wild beasts. Then he said to Moses, Come up to yod heh you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy elders of Israel, and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to yod heh but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Exodus 24, 1 and 2. The next morning they built an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes, and made sacrifices to Adonai. Then he took the book of the covenant, and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that yod heh has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that yod heh has made with you in accordance with all these words. Exodus 24, 7 and 8. Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the seventy elders ascend and saw Adonai, and the mountain was like sapphire underneath him. Moses is called up to the mountain to receive the stone tablets and the teaching, while the others are to remain below until he returns. The portion ends with, The glory of yod heh dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of yod heh was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up onto the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Exodus 24, 16 through 18. This brings us to our half Torah this week, which is the prophet Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah 34, 8 through 22, and 33, 25 and 26. The word that came to Jeremiah from yod heh After King Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people in Jerusalem to make a proclamation of liberty to them, that everyone should set free his Hebrew slaves, male and female, so that no one should enslave a Jew, his brother. And they obeyed all the officials and all the people who had entered into the covenant that everyone was set free his slave, male or female, so that they would not be enslaved again. They obeyed and set them free. Jeremiah 34, verses 8 through 10. To set the stage, Jerusalem has been under siege from King Nebuchadnezzar, and Zedekiah is the king in Judah. Just before our text, Jeremiah relayed the word of Adonai to Zedekiah that he was delivering Jerusalem into the hands of Babylon, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. He also told Zedekiah that he would not escape, but would be carried away to Babylon. But Zedekiah would die peacefully and would be buried with honor. Zedekiah and the officials of Jerusalem made a covenant with Adonai to free all their Hebrew slaves, an act of righteousness that pleased the Holy One. But afterward, they turned around and took back the male and female slaves that they had set free and brought them into subjection as slaves. Verse 11. The people had gotten word that Egypt was coming to their aid against the Babylonians. This threat actually got Babylon to retreat from Jerusalem for a time. The final con conquest and destruction of Jerusalem would actually be a year later. Now, no longer fearful of their judgment and thinking that they had been delivered by their own political alliance with Egypt, they did not fear the covenant that they had made with Adonai. The word of yod heh came to Jeremiah from yod heh Thus says yod heh the God of Israel, I myself made a covenant with your fathers when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, saying, At the end of seven years, each of you must set free the fellow Hebrew who has been sold to you and has served you six years. You must set him free from your service. But your fathers did not listen to me or incline their ears to me. Verses 12 through 14. Here we see the clear contextual connection back to this week's Torah portion. You recently repented and did what was right in my eyes by proclaiming liberty each to his neighbor. And you made a covenant before me in the house that is called by my name. But then you turned around and profaned my name when each of you took back his male and female slaves, whom you had set free according to their desire, and you brought them into, into subjection to be your slaves. Verses 15 and 16. Notice how the Holy One calls this action profaning His name. This is a textbook violation of the third commandment, to take an oath in His name and then turn around to purposely and willingly violate it. Therefore, thus says yod heh You have not obeyed me by proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim to you liberty to the sword, to pestilence, and to famine, declares yod heh I will make you a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Verse 17. Adonai is proclaiming them freedom from his divine protection. And the men who transgressed my covenant and did not keep the terms of the covenant that they made before me, I will make them like the calf that they cut in two and pass between its parts. The officials of Judah, the officials of Jerusalem, the eunuchs, the priests, and all the people of the land who pass between the parts of the calf. And I will give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of those who seek their lives. Their dead bodies shall be food for the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. Verses 18-20 through 20. It seems that Zedekiah did a traditional covenant of the pieces, like we find with Abraham in Genesis 15. The idea is that if a party broke the covenant after they had walked between the pieces of the split animal, then they should end up like that split animal. 
And Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his officials, I will give into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of those who seek their lives, into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon, which has withdrawn from you. Behold, I will command, declares Jehovah, and I will bring them back to this city, and they will fight against it and take it and burn it with fire. I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. Verses 21 and 22. It seems that their righteous covenant to free their slaves actually stayed, or at least was going to delay, the previously decreed judgment. But their wickedness in trusting in the hope of Egypt instead of the Holy One and going back on their covenant of freedom brought about a harsher punishment. Thus says Yodhe Vave, If I have not established my covenant with day and night, and the fixed order of heaven and earth, then I will reject the offspring of Jacob and David my servant, and will not choose one of his offspring to rule over the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will restore their fortunes and will have mercy on them. Jeremiah 33, 25 and 26. In verse 26, here where we read the offspring of Jacob, the word Jacob is actually spelled with an extra letter, the Hebrew letter Vav. We covered this in an earlier half Torah, but to review, the sages noticed that this added Vav in Jacob's name occurs five times in the Tanakh. They also happen to notice that Elijah's name is missing the letter Vav in his name five times in the Tanakh. So they see that Elijah's Vav was taken from his name five times and given to Jacob five times. So since Elijah is to herald the coming of the Messiah, they see the added Vav in Jacob's name in those five locations as having the same purpose, the purpose of pointing to the Messiah. And we can clearly see that the Holy One is proclaiming that he will never reject the seed of Jacob, Yeshua HaMashiach unless day and night cease to be, and the fixed order of heaven and earth are no more. Yeshua came to set the captives free. Do not enslave yourselves to the cares of this world, for you are not of this world. All praise and honor be to the Lamb who proclaims freedom for His people. Hallelujah. I pray this teaching has been edifying. Let's lift up the name of the Holy One, with love, in a shot. Shalom.